Jonesy, we did it. 200 of the best. We actually forgot to mention it on the actual <laughs> podcast. Yeah, typical because, you know, we're not about the accolades, mate. No. We just get in and we do our job for the drifters. But uh, 200, the double ton. Yeah. Not a lot of people in that uh, stratosphere, I guess. Ah, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, considering where we started, which was extremely poor audio quality, uh, filming off iPhones, I think it's fair to say that this has this whole setup has changed and there's a significant reason for that. Yes, there is a <laughs> significant reason for that. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'd, <laughs> I'd like to thank the good people at Ned's 200 episodes. Wow, thanks for the support. Um, couldn't have done it without them, definitely. Uh, not only, you know, are they great at supporting us, allowing us to do what we want to do for the drifters, also got a great app, mate. Yes. Oh, and tell you what, there's some self-trumpeting going on on my profile this week. And I'm sharing my to my Ned's profile my $28 ticket of Storm Boy and just letting everyone know about it. But I also had traffic warning as well during the week. So, you know, um, if you're on the Ned's profiles there, you can copy our bets and we'll no doubt have some from – this week's selections as well, but you'll have to wait and see. Yeah, you'll have to listen. You'll have to listen. Um, and look, there's plenty of others that we've spec'd at big prices in futures markets. Uh, you check out our April futures preview podcast if you want to, you know, have a spec responsibly in some uh, markets uh, for the championships in particular. Um, but yeah, mate, look, it's a brilliant weekend of racing. Stacks of Group One, stacks of stakes races. I cannot wait. And you know what? Next week. You'll be a married man. I know. Isn't that wild? It is wild. It is absolutely wild. But what are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. I need to ask you a question. Be curious, Drifters. Mr. Brightside bends the ball and wins again. Sardozzi wins the Oaks for J-Mac. The photo finish. Mr. Brightside or Romantic Warrior. The mayor's going great guns, fans go. Look at the go. Pass more Baker's delight in Perth. Radina, Radina just won it. I'd say Tom Kedden won the spring champion in a cakewalk. Without a fight, without a fight, won the Caulfield Cup. How would you summarise yesterday, mate? Gone slipper day in a nutshell. Deflating. Was, yeah. <laughs> Deflating, to be honest. It was tough, wasn't it? Yeah, I, look, I wouldn't say tough. Like, I think. I think the punters had plenty of opportunity, yeah. but for us personally, it was a it was a tough day, mate. It was it was tough. Tell you what, you can trust in Sydney is the late money. Oh man, yeah, every it's time, spot on. Yeah, the syndicates absolutely nail it in Sydney more so than any other jurisdiction, at least in Australia. Yeah, um, yeah, they 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 would have nailed like oh nearly all the group ones, right? Except for the well, Galaxy. Well, yeah. Yeah, who won the Zapateo? Yeah, she was twenty six dollars, but you know she the writing was on the wall with her start prior as well. Yeah, it's just these mate, these mares in form. My God, you can back them with confidence. You can, yeah. And they really have can. they have these preparations that never end, <laughs> never ending story. Yep, hundred um, percent. Yeah, well they they dominated yesterday, didn't they? I know, mate. And I guess the question on everyone's lips from our drifters at least, is what the bloody hell happened to Storm Boy? Oh, mate, he just... Um, I, I've, I've got no explanation for that race. I, on the podcast, gave Lady of Camelot a bit of a bath. Like zero chance. I gave her zero. I was like, well, if you want the Blue Diamond form, you want Hayasugi. A miracle that Jamie Carr stayed on, by the way. Twice, mate. Twice, Twice yeah. That? Unbelievable. <laughs> um. So yeah, I didn't I didn't give her any, uh, and clearly I was wrong. The, there was a lot of early money for her. Like she got jammed in from like thirteens or fourteens to sixes at one point. Who's that? Lady of Camelot. Yeah, absolutely jammed in. Yeah, she. Well, I think outside of Stormboy, because Stormboy was backed in as well. So he opened about two, what, two thirty into two fifteen, out to about two seventy, but he started about two forty, two fifty. Yep. So the market did want to be with him. Maybe he drifted really late to 260. Um, but there's a couple of things on this horse. He kind of – he missed the start, which doesn't doesn't help. 
Um, so he's a little bit slow away. Now, would Adam Hippopotamus get him in a better spot? I know. Fuck, look at Jamie Carr there, mate. Poor she Jamie. Did, yeah. And you see her, like she actually, her left foot is like out of the irons yeah. as well. So she did an unbelievable job to kind of stay there. Yep. Um, so there were, let me just check my notes here. <laughs> um, three 1,200-meter races on the day and the two-year-olds would have beaten, they ran the quickest time. So yeah, right. they would have beaten the Brave Mead and three-year-old race by about just under two lengths. So I think they've they've run a pretty decent clip here. Um, Switzerland? Mate, oh, absolutely friendless. So there's a couple of things here on Storm Boy and Ryan Moore said as much and he doesn't say much when he wins a race, let alone loses it. <laughs> yeah. But the thing that really uh, bungled his chances, I guess, was that inside ground, um, which kept saying it time and time again throughout the day, that was not the place to be. No. And it, you were traveling backwards if you're on I the inside. Know. It was absolute quicksand. And yeah. you can actually see it in the um, in the helicopter footage. It's just It was just torn up from what I'm assuming was last week. Yeah. So... <laughs> Makes me just think, how how was it a soft six the week before? It was absolute madness. Like, yeah, to kind of like bungle that for your biggest day. Now, I think it's all on as the winner though. Yeah, she was brilliant because she was. If you have a look at this again, she was held up until the two hundred. Yeah, yeah, she she was brilliant. Um, she trialed the house down during the week or, or last week or something like that, and. Um, was super brave in the in the diamonds, but I just didn't think it was the, the the sort of lead up that I wanted to see. At least not at you know, in comparison to Storm Boy in Switzerland. But yeah, she just really kicks away, doesn't she? Yeah, I think this diamond form is easily the best two year old form heading into this race. So the Todman was okay uh, on raw figures. Uh, whatever Storm Boy ran in in the prior um, in the lead up too as well, but. Diamond Form runs the Quinella. Um, Storm Boy runs third. Traffic Warden runs fourth. Like, hell of a performance by Coleman, but my God, if I was an owner in that horse, I'd be fuming. I'd be so angry. <laughs> why, glory. Yeah. why the hell do you put a bloody tongue tie on it just in case in the big Group 1 uh, grand final? Anyway, that's a side. But I actually want to have a look at this because if we go to... As I just do some, have a look in the lead up. So there's already been four winners from the Blue Diamond. Like that's a that's a hell of a performance. So Lady of Camelot, obviously. Yep. Kiranagi's gone for a spell. Anisa ran sixth. Yep. At seventy to one. Um, <clears throat> I think Stay Focus has pulled up stumps. Fearless won a midweek maiden. Yep. Traffic Water mostly gave galloping lesson in the size at Flemington. Um, and Ru- Rudel Royale ran second in that race, and he ran about sixth or seventh. Yep. Um, Dublin Downs, Downs won. Um, Spywire <laughs> ran fourth yesterday, but yeah. that was that was a tough watch. And then Coleman's placed in two black type races post that. Yep. This this form reference it was the it was the quickest run two year old race all year or all all season. So I think that's a bit of a lesson. <clears throat> it uh. It just produced like the best horse. Yep. I think. Yeah, it did. And uh on the day. Yeah, on the day. And like so contrary to what I thought, I thought the Sydney form was superior. Um easily leading into into that. Um <laughs> it was deflating to be honest. Um Storm Boy and and yeah, you're frustrated about the inside in inside lanes being so um What's the, opposite, what's the opposite of superior? Inferior. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah, it's just absolutely just disappointing. But you know, uh, all yeah, all credit to the winner, like you said. It just it just kept happening time and time and time again, uh, unfortunately. And it's like the horses that like all of them first four past the post drew six and in. So it's like it was like they just got them in the better position. Like, uh, unfortunately, mate, Kieran is. Riding so well, and it's so it's so disappointing that you know he's got that injury. So apparently, you know, 
Fortunately, the horse got put down, but uh, Kieran's in good spirits, but he does have a leg injury. Right, okay. Um, so last time I heard, I think Channel, um, Seven Horse Racing put up an update on their socials. But wash up of this. Did you see Gabe Waterhouse's reaction? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. She was, uh, she was keen on Storm Boy, I think. Adrian Boba. Why were Adrian and Gabe? Did you see Adrian's screenshot? No. So yeah. there's a screenshot on Twitter, right? Him after the race, and he's like, He's like this, just basically stone faced after later you came off past the line. Yeah. Basically <laughs> the implications of Stormboy winning were just the upside was immeasurable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, devastating for them. But why were Adrian and Gay so unenthused that Lady Camelot won? Were they also in for a cool more kickback, Andrew Bova? Yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> of course they were. Of course they were. <laughs> Money speaks, champ. Go yeah, on. Yeah, it does. Um, oh, look, it, that's why we're so deflated. Like, bec- because the the upside to your point was was so significant with Stormboy winning that race. Um, and you know, the story's not over for him, obviously. But I, I think unless you're on Lady of Camelot, you, you just you are left left a bit deflated. And yeah, and that's what that's what happens when a when a filly wins these big stallion making races, mate. My, in previous years, I probably would have taken on Stormboy. And it's like, I didn't have another bet on him after I got him in early markets, right? Yeah. But I think one thing that we could potentially learn from that as well is he's in his first preparation. He had the seven-week let up, sure, but to go out of that from a really tough run in that Magic Millions, in retrospect, was he a little bit flat? I thought that lead-up run was still really good. He was in the worst part of the track. He, uh, on in the Golden Slipper, he missed the start and he's only gone down by, what, one and a half lengths. Like, yeah. all things considered, where he is looking for further as well, yeah. I think. So, all things considered, I think you can – because and, – and this is Will Finlay. Thank you for the question, mate, but you've got this horrifically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Stormboy retired or Everest bound? Neither. <laughs> Neither, neither, mate. He's going to the size, mate. <laughs> he's not going to be retired. They are, they are absolutely desperate for yeah. this guy to jag a group one as a two year old. Oh, um, like Coolmore, Coolmore. How much? Like I think it's minimum fifteen or twenty million that they've basically paid for this cult now. Yeah. And I think the bonuses are there. And we said this yesterday. For him running a place, it's not a disaster. It's like if he was not to win, they'd need it into place. And he did that. Um, so um, he, yeah, he'll be going to the size in the champagne if he pulls up, all things considered, because they want that two year old group one win. Oh, desperately. After this, especially. No, nah, he's, um, he's going to continue racing um, for sure. And then Everest. I, I don't think I don't think no. so. No, no. I thought I saw Lloydie from Mugs Punting and the Leg Up Fame uh, say that mate, he could win the Golden Slipper, the Sires, uh, the Champagne Stakes. I reckon he could win a Caulfield Guineas, and then he'll go in and win a Cox Plate. I'm like, holy shit, mate! <laughs> That's the best horse I've ever seen. If he does that. <laughs> yeah, Lloydie. But like, I'm I'm with you, Lloydie. Like, I always. You know, I wasn't stretching it that far, but I was I was keen for him to win this race, yeah. mate. Like, so disappointing. But um, all, full credit to the winner. Um, Any others you want to take out of it? Oh, Coleman's a good horse. Coleman, yeah, Coleman's a good horse. Uh, traffic, was, traffic warden. Traffic, mate. He, I think he's another one that. So of those first four past the post, right? Look at him. I oh, know, and he was in even worse ground. <laughs> um, and he was held up as well. So. If you're on at the 51s each way, <laughs> commiserations. <laughs> um, but hopefully you had like a Ned same race multi or something. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I think he had, he, had a, he had a run down in Melbourne uh, and then he got put away, traffic warden. So he's actually in his second preparation, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Uh, Lady Camelot had that debut run really early uh, and then she got put away. Coleman had a really light preparation before – like Christmas, and then he got put away. Stormboy's the only one that's been going through. I think it's a little bit too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. And I think Shinzo was an exception last year because that was that all came so quickly for him. And it's a weak crop. Yeah, it is. 
uh, at least in the in the sprinting ranks. Um, so yeah, that, that's a lesson for Storm Boy. But I think I think the the inferior lanes really played a part, uh, yeah. unfortunately. And 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 you wouldn't be saying that if this was the only race. Like we've got us two especially <laughs> have a lot of a lot of evidence to suggest mm-hmm. that the inside lanes were really inferior. Uh, well, one that we did nail and. One of the few on the day uh, was the Rambet Stakes as well. Uh, Via Sistina, my goodness, but this was breathtaking. It was a phenomenal win off a very, very sedate pace. Mate, it was, she put him to the sword. Yeah, and I think if I ha- ha- if I check my notes here again, <laughs> my detective notes. <laughs> detective Dan Hutchin. <laughs> the, so what did they do? They would have run home in the Rambet approximately, what is that, about four and a half lengths quicker? maybe about five lengths quicker in the Rambit for the last 600. But on raw times and figures, the Rose Hill Guineas actually ran home about 8.75 lengths quicker on overall times. So there was a bit more speed injected into the Rose Hill Guineas race. So this was a bit of a sit and sprint, small field, sure, best part of the track. But this is a classy, classy man. Oh, yeah. And her um, her form overseas... Uh, suggested that she was just better than this field. Uh, proved to be the case. Um, and you actually made a point yesterday about poor old Think It Over. Like he's got this in him, mate. He when he's when he's got a two or a three in front of it, and there's it's single figures because he can go around at twenty to one. <laughs> He'll win at twenty one. He never wins at two bucks ever. No. Um, and Nash said he had a he had an off day, which you know all horses they they can have flat days, uh, but. Yeah, this – and we typically see this, right? Sometimes the really, really good ones, as soon as they go past the post, they switch off. Mm. Look at her here, mate. She gets in front by one and a half lengths. J-Max stops riding and she responds immediately and then they run past her. Animo used to do the exact same thing. He did, yeah. Um, Queen Elizabeth stakes at her mercy – I hope, I hope you dived into the price before the race, Drifters. Yeah. Uh, I think in the April futures market preview, I think we were suggesting that 6 to $7 was a bet. Mm. Uh, she will not be that quote now. She is $2.50 in some markets and right now. I, we were saying on the preview podcast as well, I was suggesting that this horse was so close to being my best bet of the day because she was just so clearly the class horse in the race. Yeah. Yeah, um, mate. The market so they agreed because <laughs> was on the go and a half on the morning just before scratching, she was about three dollars ninety, which I couldn't believe. It was absolute madness. But I think on the tote, mate, she jumped at two bucks. Yeah, that is one of the biggest goes I've ever seen. Yep, a hundred percent. Yeah, Buckaroo was good. Buckaroo was good. Worst part of the track again. So Ryan. Kind of, I thought he was just giving a bit of test before yeah. the slipper, and he, Buckaroo got through it. But Buckaroo is also a bit of a wet tracker, so he might have offset like that. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So it's like um, he might have gone like, "Oh yeah, this is not too bad." But a few races later, it probably just got chopped up and it was no good. Um, Fourteen hundred uh, up to two thousand meters. That was a good performance. Yeah, it was really solid. Place to carousel was really good. Um, that was her first ever run on a good track as well. Um, so. You know, I think she'll she'll be in there, um, but it just goes to show that like Buckaroo, you can pretty much classify him as a as a European as well. The Europeans are just going to dominate this Queen Elizabeth. Oh, they 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 have to, mate. Like um, I said in the preview podcast, like this is not a vintage Group One at all. But look, in retrospect, Via Sistina, Plastic Carousel, Buckaroo, yeah, yeah. Fastnet Rock, mate. So he was involved in in one way or another, whether he was the sire of the winners or the sire of the dam of the winners. Um, I think three of the five. Yeah. Aussie sire. Yeah. And he, mate, he has a massive imprint in Europe. He does. does. Yeah. Does a very, very good lift. I was arrogant on the top. <laughs> it was his time. <laughs> mate, he was. It was Kitty Cat Tom's time. And he. And Hugh got him. In such a sexy position. Oh, I was like, look at him smoking his pipe. And I was like, oh, he's taking the corner. And we just saw Buckaroo make ground. I was like, yes, he's just going to kick away now. 
He didn't, <laughs> he didn't kick away at all. He faded to like seventh or eighth. But look at these lanes. I know. Yeah. And for what we saw first up from Riff Rocket, like he, he does have, for these middle distance horses, he has the best turn of foot. Yeah. Um, and you even see that really late there, right? Where they're all getting a bit tired. So Cap Ferrar basically, and Chilwolf was really good as well, but they the ones inside just kind of like fall into this quicksand and then they kind of all, that's the way they end. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> look, if any of those are heading towards uh, a Queen Elizabeth. Holy shit, look at this tan. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you can't see this. He's got a skull, doesn't he? But one of the connections in Riff Rocket has one of the great skull tans I've ever seen. <laughs> Baldy heard. <laughs> um so, if any of those from the Rose Hill Guineas head to the Queen Elizabeth, do you think any of them have a chance against Via Sestina? Uh, they're probably not as well in at Way for Age now, are they? Because of the timing of the carnival. So, no. I doubt it. Um, potentially, oh, Militarise has given me the ick this prep. It's just like... He's just finding – I feel like he, he started at the top of the tree, this three-year-old rankings, right? But he's just slowly, slowly dropping down. He's yeah. running well, but if you are good to remain at the tippy top of that those positions, you need to be winning. Yeah, you know 100%. What, I mean? what yeah. do you reckon? Yeah, no, I agree with that. Well, I agree with that. Um, like, All right, let's put it this way. If Riff Rocket, Kitty Cat Tom, or Militarise are running in the champion stakes at Royal Ascot, are they running second in that race? No, no. So I think no. Via Sestina has to be yeah. has to be like the deserved favourite, and you know I think it, something would have to go horribly wrong for her not to be featuring in the finish there. Yep, completely agree. Now your, I think your third pick in the race, Cafe Millennium, what happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot he was in the. Yeah, race. I forgot he's in the race as well. Oh, he's in the quicksand. The yeah, big fella, big fella, he yeah. can't get through that. Hey, look at him. He's, he looks like a child. <laughs> He might, I think he might be facing the Snip Cafe Millennium. Um, so, out of that race, heading towards a derby. Oh, do you give? Because do you give Kitty Cat Tom mate, another chance? If he's ten bucks, oh, he's a bet to nothing. Like he just and Hugh said this in the wash up as well. It's like this horse is looking for further, and that's that's consistent with what the stable's been saying. Early season three year old, he was too brilliant at two thousand meters, like. Cap Farrar is – he is behind counter the best mate in the country. And um, <laughs> like he he just looks like that horse, even though he is out of schnitzel, that he just will appreciate the ground as well. But, mate, like Riff Rocket I feel like is just too brilliant, you know? Mm. But this Chill Wolf's good too. Like he his breeding will suggest that he'll get out to further too. And like if I look at Chill Wolf, Cap Farrar, Immediacy, Tom Kitten. What's going like, on with King Colorado? Oh, flash in the pan, mate. Yeah. The JJ? Yeah. So, I, unfortunately, he's probably, in hindsight, one of the worst JJ winners we've had. <laughs> he was 40 to 1 that day. He was. Like, there was a, oh, Speaking of plungers, there was one of the great plungers. If you listen to the podcast, you got on there. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd say, who am I taking? In the derby. What about immediacy? Immediacy, yeah, he was, he was okay. Like, again, he's in the first preparation. Yeah. Like, it's tough. Um, it is tough. So, like, if I'm orchestral, you're probably more scared of Zardozzi, Zardozzi than you are the boys. Yeah. So... I think if you put Zardozzi in that race, she is either or Riff Rocket that wins. Absolutely. So, I... I Not Kitty be, Cat Tom. No. <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be for Tim. Uh, the George Ryder. Now, bit to unpack here. I think uh, who was, I think um, Sammy Clipperton has got a suspension out of this. Because, oh, does he? Yeah. He, who did he, he gave someone in the nudge, was it, maybe the, or maybe it was V8 or something. Anyway. Affected amenable, apparently. But Mark Zara, after I said, he was so flat, <laughs> which he was. I think at way for age, 1,500 metres, amenable, not his jam. He was being hard-ridden a long way from home. So he needs to step back and grade. But V8, mate, 
Damien Lane said it post race as well. He just never runs a bad race, this horse. No, he doesn't. Um, he was in my numbers, uh, but um, I disrespect him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, we both had Lady Laguna in our numbers too. She is, mate. What a she has to be most improved. Oh, easily in the, in the autumn, fifteen hundred meters, like. At her first, her first go there, and there's nothing to, to suggest that she can't run out a mile as well. Mm. No, she was good, um, but militarized like he gets back and he doesn't have that. He doesn't have the turn of foot that he showed as a two year old. He's, he's more no. of a a grinder. Well, it's interesting that they think they clearly think that he only has one run in him at two thousand meters, and it would be fascinating to see if. Waller takes him there to take on the mare because he trains both of them. And what we've seen with Chris this prep is when he can in these big group one races, he wants to separate them. Mm. So um, now think I think think about it. What do you think of his run? Oh, it was always going to be hard drawing that gate and it was always going to be um, – Pretty much three wide there. Oh, he, could, he did get in eventually. Yeah, and, and – um, <clears throat> With the, the blood cell thing during the week, like, was he 100% right? Like, as soon as you hear that, as a punny, you're like, oh. And the the writing was on the wall as well because, mm. um, yeah, with that and the market was a bit off him, which yeah. they usually are pretty solid with him. I think he, I think he still started around $5 favorite, but, like, I think he was opened up about, what, 350 or $4 or something. Mm. Um, so that was Cepheus and that's Lady Laguna. So, Militarized had the back of Lady Laguna throughout the entire straight. And where did V8? He came out off the back of Think Bear, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, he did. Three-year-olds, mate. I said to follow him. Mate, you... I just followed the wrong one. You nailed it. Um, Kovalika heading to a Doncaster? That seems like right in his wheelhouse, doesn't it? It's, um, it's unbelievable. He's easy to become a non-event, Kovalika. Um, Wait... <laughs> So he's a he's a four four year old. Like he does pick up quite nicely late, but mate, get him in a Doncaster or something, uh, in a Queen Elizabeth or something. You know, you'd think so. What do we know? Um, so let's have a look at this again. So I think yeah, you can just tell that the way they're racing, the fence was completely off. So anything that's making ground on the fence throughout the entire program, you give it a bonus. Um, Lady Laguna in a better spot than V8 Militarise even better Absolutely savaging the line um, You're looking at him through the line as well Yeah Interesting with him Interesting um, oh, I don't know I don't know what oh, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do with him Like you take him to You have to take him to Queen Elizabeth Don't you now So the only place you can take him Militarise Yeah Yeah I think so I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, there was another 1,500-meter uh, race on the day, and this, this lot would have beaten the midway in the first uh, Electrica uh, by 6.8 lengths. Right. And, and that horse won by 3.2. So Shit. brained him. Um, so I think it was run at a pretty decent clip, all things considered. But how's the uh, internationals? So at this sprint, sprinting mile distance, these internationals just unless they're Japanese, put yeah. a put a line through them. The Europeans, 100%. they're absolute non-events. Like you need them at the two thousand meters plus, and we saw that throughout the program. Yep. Now, oh, <laughs> this is the one I really he's hate. hurt, mate. Honestly, he's the, hurt. Mate. The second coming of Jesus Christ Himself, Jason Collette, gave Sunshine in Paris a sensational ride. He did. Three back the fence, not the place to be, had no other option. Um, tell you who ran a race, and yours truly gave it a push, was front page. Mm. Um, oh, mate, Zapateo just gets in the right Superior, line, superior you, ground. You switch those rides, Sunshine and Paris wins. Oh, easy. And she picks up, mate. Look at – really tough, and you gave a sensational push for those for her as well. Mm. Like – Oh, that first four would have paid look, anything, mate. Look at ten meters past the post here. I dare you. I dare you to look at this. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at this, bang, and then bang straight away 
in front. <laughs> We've been talking about this horse for months. Mate, she got absolutely whacked in the market as well. Like, we were talking about her at, like, 17s in this race in futures, and then she opened at 13s. That was taken straight away. She came into nines, and she ended up – she was favorite at one point at, like, $4, mate. I know. I know. So we knew, and everyone else knew, obviously, but – Mate, I even said, I went back and listened last night because I was like, did I put Zapatero in my first four? I didn't. But I said, mate, even Zapatero could win this race Like yeah. at the end of it. Like, honestly, I shouldn't have said that because yeah. if I didn't, she wouldn't have won. No, nah, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong because I didn't really listen back, but I said, like, she, if you like Af Cabin and, um, and like Passive Aggressive, Zapatero is another one because she was really, really good first up. Yeah, she was. Um, but yeah, fifty three kilos at equal, pretty well equal weights. Like Sunshine Paris, you had to take it. Um, but Kieran, mate, uh, yeah, he gave this horse a sensational ride. It's such a shame because, like, he's been one of our whipping boys on this podcast. But he, we give credit where it's due, and he's, <laughs> he's been, been in, he's been in abs- phenomenal form. phenomenal form. Um, now there is the story of us being on the plunge horse, but the horse that we gave absolutely no chance, <laughs> Osmosis, mate, he didn't want to be in the race. No, he was so cultish. He missed the jump, didn't he? Well, let's have a look here. Where will I find this? So, <coughs> uh, Osmosis. Oh, it doesn't say there. Uh, but, yeah, it was unbelievable stuff. Yeah. So, what have we learnt? We've learnt the three-year-olds, the sprinting crop, no good. Give them a wide berth. The middle distance to stayers, depending on the race, give them a whack. Like, I think it's pleasing that Riff Rocket, I, I'm thinking of like the industry and the bigger picture here. It's really pleasing that he won the Rose Hill Guineas because now we have like the heir apparent to a, to a uh, think it over. You know what I mean? Is like he'll be competing in Ram Bets in Queen Elizabeth for years to come. As a girl thing, yep. Yep. Um, but I think best three-year-old, would it be Riff Rocket? I think so. I think so. I think I think you have to say Riff Rocket. Um, V8's close by. He's well, pretty consistent. I was, you know, I was going to make this uh, comparison a few a few weeks ago. Um, because the races are kicked off in like, you know, the lead up races to the Rose Hill, uh, the Randwick Guineas and that sort of thing. So think of the Celestial Legend races early days and yep. that sort of thing, right? I was going to make the comparison, and I'm glad I didn't, that V8 is the end cap of Victoria. Because <laughs> end cap, he, he, runs a, he runs a good race yeah, every time. He's, he's yeah. like Komachi. So it's like. Yeah. Like, basically runs top five in all of these races, but never wins. Mm. But V8, I feel like it was a little bit unfair because I'm like, oh, actually, he does win, but he doesn't win the grand final. But, you know, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, Yeah. I'd say... Look, if... At the end of the season, we'll obviously have a clear idea. Like, post-Doncaster, like, if, if Celestial Legend comes out and wins that... Yeah, and he's looking like a really good bet now. Um, then you'd, you'd have to say Celestial Legend. Yeah, what he has forty nine kilos, very tough to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, so Af Cabin. So we did not nail that. No, well, I did say this as well. Um, I was really, really mindful of him. He's here back last, which I don't think is absolutely necessary for him, but. He just had nothing go right. No. He just put a line through the run. And the other thing is as well, he was first up off a bleed. And when they are held up for so long, they are entitled to run on a bit yeah. as well. But look at that, mate. He has just zero, nowhere to go. Um, Yeah, so you can put a line through that. And, you know, he could start like 20s or something in a TJ and it's like, hello. Especially if, it's a, if it is a wet deck, which he's better on. Do you know what they need to get him <clears throat> Up four? Strat break. Oh, yeah. And, no, 1,400 metres, I reckon that is. Yeah. Because he, he did in that a, last in a, year. In a handicap race. He ran in it last year, didn't he? Yeah. Or did he run in the... Um, uh, Kingsley Smith, Kingsley maybe? Smith maybe? I can't remember, but... Um, what about this guy? Private Eye. 
What's the, what are they doing? At I don't know. Less than anything less than twelve hundred meters. Like Unless if, Joe Pride's an absolute genius, and it's just <laughs> like all of this is just a tune up for the TJ. Yeah, I get that, but like two runs at a thousand, this at eleven hundred, where he's top eight and still supported by the market. Yeah, like I just I didn't understand any of that, and we said as much on the podcast as well. It's like I I think he if. You get to get him under twelve hundred meters as a winner. You need to back him first up at eleven hundred meters. Yeah, that's where he's that's where he's a betting prospect. Anything other than that, you can give him a wide berth. I feel because he's a miler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he's proven that. Yeah, um, he just yeah he has a really electric turn of foot, and it's like some of his best runs have been down the straight at Flemington as well. Yeah, and it's like you almost need a thirteen hundred meter horse. Yeah, for those races. So, uh, the. Other wash up, Derry Grove bled both nostrils. Oh. So he'll be out for about three months as well, which is one of mine. So that's not good to see. But between us, mate, we had second, third, and fourth and sixth. So we've gone pretty close. Yeah. Yep. Not and, a bad effort. And third last. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we should go check out. Imperatrez, as I kind of pad here, but <laughs> she was good. She was good, mate. <laughs> but the thing that's coming out of this race is, who is Johnny Rocker? <laughs> he, he ran the house down. Mate, he's, as I said to you just before, he's absolutely murdered his own rating. <laughs> I think he was a, what was he? He was a 72 rater or something going into this race. He won't, he, <laughs> that, he won't will cease, that will cease to exist now. Uh like that horse has been coming from his lead up run. He was ba- running against like Midtown Boss <laughs> in a benchmark 78 handicap at the Valley. Or it, what did he carry? He carried um, 56 kilos. So um, before that, he was in a benchmark 70. Well done if you got that, Quincy, or if uh, you had him in your Ned's same race multi. Oh, yeah, full credit to you. you like, um, yeah, Imperatriz at the Valley, mate. She just gets around so well. Yeah. And I think it is it is fair to say that she isn't going as well as she was in the spring. No, she's not. Um, so in the TJ, I don't think it's like – I'd almost be looking for someone to beat her. If Sunshine in Paris is there, <laughs> like way for Adrian, I think she's good enough. Oh, she's good enough, mate. So – even though it's like, yeah, she'll be carrying a few more kilos. Speaking of, actually, Ryan Maloney was hospitalized trying to make weight. Really? Yeah. So they had to get two liters of fluid into him. Oh, jeez. So he's been he's been um, ejected. That's not the right word, but you know he's been released from yeah. the hospital. So he's fine. But it's like, yeah, he was doing anything yeah, he to was, try and ride this horse. He was which desperate. I feel like that <laughs> speaks volumes of the talent that that girl has. Yeah. Never been outside the top three. No. Um, but. Would you agree with that? Would you? Are you still going to be on side with Imperatriz heading into a TJ? All things like being equal. Well, yeah, mostly, mostly because, um, like, yeah, she's she's not as good as what she was in the spring, but I think her at ninety percent is still good enough to win the TJ. Like, looking at Private Eye, happy to take him on. Um, I wish I win's going to be first up. So, like, yeah, he can definitely win, but. We've seen with I Wish I Win, he kind of he gives out late as well yep. in his first up runs. So yep. I'd, admit, I'd imagine Moods would be getting plenty of work in oh, yeah. as well. I mean, he wouldn't surprise at all. No. But um, but then, yeah, you're looking at like your sunshine in Paris and, and whatnot um, for a bit of value. But no, Imperatrice is still clearly the one to beat. Yep, absolutely. Now, uh, it wouldn't be a Sydney Carnival without William Haggis just r and yeah. the Manion Cup. Yep. Honestly. <laughs> Said that this thing was way too slow. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> but I'll give credit to myself here. Man's voice. <laughs> I gave him a chance, mate. He ran second at $15. Yeah. He's, a, he's, he's doing okay heading towards the Sydney Cup. Now, the winner, I think, drops significant amount of weight heading <laughs> to a Sydney Cup. So I think he... Uh, He'll be hard to beat. He'll be extremely hard to beat. He was in the best ground, but, oh, mate. Oh, he just, he just put into the sword. It's clearly better. Yeah. So it just it speaks volumes of our uh, staying ranks in this country. Same sire as without a fight. Tia Philo. 
there you go. Mm. If I'd known that, I would have been on. Uh, <laughs> speaks volumes of the um, the breeding guy that I am. Lol. Um, Darby Munro. So I think this was one of the few for the source. Um, the more I thought about it and the more that the source thought about it, it's just like Brave Me, third up, easy draw, Shin. Is he the best jockey in Australia, Blake Shin? Oh, he's close to. He's, way, he's just one a slipper. Yeah, I know. And the Derby Munro. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> that was a that was an easy bet, Brave Mead. And as you highlighted, it's like, oh, he wants to get on his Melbourne leg, mm. which he absolutely did. And this was only his second go on the Sydney Way. Um and I was I was desperate. Desperate, I tell you, for Corniche to run second here. <laughs> which he does not. And Schwartz was good. Worst part of the track. Um Oh, that is sick. Um, <laughs> it was a this this far away from greatness, drifters. Really, really close stuff. Yeah, um, we were we were there or thereabouts, mate. Yeah. Um, Brave Mead, right? So clearly, he's not a you know group one weight for H horse. Absolutely not. But what's his ceiling? He could go to. Could a, he run in a Stradbroke handicap and start single figures? Um. I think we've seen the best of him now at 1,200 metres. Yeah. I want to see him in a Goodwood handicap. Yep. That is the race for him. Stable, love R&Ping. At oh, r and It's worth a million now. He's still got his nuts. Mate, he, that's the race for him. Like, mm. But the thing is, is like that's listed grade that yeah. he's in. And I think he might have – he's picked up like a group one uh, – not group one. Uh, he's picked up like a group two or a group three here and there as well. So – don't know what his rating will be like, um, what way to get there, but he should be still pretty decent in a field like that. So I feel like that's the race for him. Yep. Um, so yeah, kind of like that group three level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being generous there, More like listed. Yeah. Um, Benchmark one hundred. So you'll recall in the spring this this shits me that <laughs> Channel Lightning one because I basically again. I just needed to see her do it right, but you'll remember on Derby Day, and it just the the stars didn't align that day. But I was like, oh man, she hasn't been in like mare's grade for a minute. Like she'll uh, she'll go down in grade, and she'll just because she's just been at this Group One level, and she'll go back, and she'll just like she won a really nice race. I'm a, I'm a season away. Second up, she absolutely brained him. Um, with the top weight, no less. Um, Alentia. <laughs> She's got the early esp- espionas about it, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. Um, I thought she loomed up to win the race, but... Uh, right part of the track, got yep. the back of the winner. Yeah, she had every right to win this, mate. She's, yep. she's oh, n- it's not good seeing no. her, is it? Um, <clears throat> not a betting prospect, mate. No. Because she... The bookie's always... Keep her safe. So you're mm. not going to get any value, but chain of lightning, gee whiz. Sometimes mares just go out of form so badly. Yeah, I know. And then they can come back into it straight away. Yeah, and her run in the Oakley Plate was not that bad. No, it like, wasn't. And his sprinting handicaps, I feel like the form out of it has been pretty decent. Um, so anyway, it is what it is. Um, now, was there anything else of note in um- – <laughs> Gumdrops, oh. I, I, I'm, you mate. You're lucky that I've taken back my resignation because I said before before that race, the Gumdrops and Isthmus race. I said if Gumdrop wins, I probably have to resign yeah. from the podcast. And sure enough, Gumdrops won in a canter at eight dollars, mate. I know. I'm an know. idiot, mate. How's Eternal Flame winning again? Oh. About the only time she hasn't won is when yours truly's been on her. <laughs> um, Oh, gave Gringzing a bell a push on the podcast as well, and she goes down by half a length to something at ten bucks. <laughs> um, uh, but the Alistair Clark, like something of fifty to one that has that was beaten four lengths to put to orchestral in New Zealand wins. Ooh. Like the form about that filly is just so delicious. Can't wait to see her. Yeah. Um, so. She'll run extremely well. Um, apparently, Craig Newer said, I gave a push for Snow Patrol in the race. 
doesn't run out 2,000 metres. Right. Um, so it is what it is. And purely, I, mate, I didn't think it'd be last. No. Let's put it that way. No. Um, Imperatriz, sensational. Then, yeah, <laughs> gun drops in the sun. Oh, uh, the Casbolt. <laughs> yep. <sighs> terrible, terrible, terrible from your boy. Oh, well. These things happen, mate. These things happen. Extra two was a good win. Yes. There was a pulse. Yeah. Um, now, what do we have next week? Australia Cup, Tancred, and Vinery. So, if we have a look at the markets for these, apologies, Rifters, the internet is not the best up here. So, bear with us. Now, we have early positions on the Australia Cup. Now... Riff Rocket runs like that, like he did in the Rose Hill Guineas in the Australia Cup. Does he win? Potentially. Potentially. Australia Cup markets. So Mr. Brightside, 270. Prior to Jenny, four bucks. A tissue, eights. Cascadian, eights. Legado, nines. Young Werder, 13s. Vow Declare, 15s. Mac Ram, 21s. <laughs> um, you can have the rest. Yep. I think a t- you could play both a tissue and Cascadian, I feel, in that. Eight yep. bucks each. Stake level, level staking, you basically get four to one. Same price as prior Jenny, which is a question mark, but she's at this stage of her prep, mare and form, arguably the best horse in the race. Yeah. Um, the question mark, obviously, for her is 2,000 metres, but like just, just, just a quick glance at that, who's fighting her for the lead? Maybe, maybe you know, she can break their hearts again and, and just, just hold on to the last furlong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like um, it, it, she still she still beat Mister Brightside by what two lengths? Yeah, in the six in the yeah. sixteen hundred meter All Star Mile. So yeah. who, who's to, like she doesn't need to win by that. Stepping up two furlongs is hard. Oh yeah, and what I'd need to do is um, and I'll do this prior to uh, when I call you in to the podcast on Wednesday because I will be on my honeymoon. Long. Um, so the Dar will be impressed with that. But I'll have a look at uh, Cascadians like lead up ratings to his Australia Cup win and yep. see if he came in from a really hard run race because I feel like if he did and he perf- did a performance like that, then he's kind of like the clear on top selection, yep. you know. And, well, thinking about it as well. Think about it. A tissue might have actually done that during the uh, spring carnival. A tissue well. wants to truly run 2,000 metres. She was in the Empire Rose. A tissue. Um, was she in the Empire Rose then into the Champion Stakes? Yeah. Yep. 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 So, and that was a truly run race. Yep. So, a tissue is probably another one that you could probably bet with confidence. And Legato, like, I think she's a, a 1,600 meter horse, but, you know, she'll go back. And if it is a truly run race and, and you know, something allows her to slingshot into it, maybe that's what she needs. Um, yeah. But I think the 2,000 meters just dulls her sprint a little bit. Yep. Tell you what, this tankard. This is this is poo sort of stuff. <laughs> this is poo poo. <laughs> Arapaho sevens, Ashron sevens, military mission mission sevens. By Dajon, scratched from the Ram vet, could be heading here. Ran fourth in the Caulfield Cup at twenty four hundred nine dollars, but oh, that's short. He was fifty to one in the Caulfield, hundred to one in the Caulfield Cup running that yep. type of race, and he was down in the handicap. More felons, nine, Serpentine, 15s, Athabascan, Canberra Legend, Calipore, Manzois, Vown de Clare. Well, Vown de Clare will be heading to Flemington. Poptronic, not sure who that horse is. Like Carini, possibly. Like, yeah, you go down the list here and it's, it's awfully, uh, awfully it's thin. thin. Like, potentially, I'd have to look at what Sharp and Smart's been doing over in New Zealand. He was in that Legato race uh, and he wasn't great. Okay. Oof. Yeah, this is one of the stinkiest group ones I've seen for a minute. Yep. Potentially Rappo could go back to back. Who knows? Um, and then, yeah, the Vinery. So, 2,000 metres for the Phillies. Orchestral, 230. Zardozzi, 380. Who is this thing? Mayor of St. Bula. Mayor of Mount Bula. Mount Bula. St. Bula. Um, we'll have to do some research about that thing because I sure have will. zero idea. Um I said Molly Nickers wasn't a bet at two dollars. Yeah, and you were right. Like the held up, like the held up, are really unlucky runs. 
sometimes the market just thinks they're, oh, they're a certainty to win next start. It's like, this, no, well, this, that, that was their time and they were unlucky. And this autumn, it's been proven like, nah, bruh, that ain't, that ain't it. Like it's time it and time and time again, Af Cabin was one. It's not how it works, bro. Because no. I feel like the good ones, if they are unlucky, they can still overcome that. Lady of Camelot was a good example. Yeah. Yep. No, oh, we've learned a lot in the last 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Two to Levita at $17 is a bit of value. She was Create, good. Create some interest. But top two in the market for me. Yeah, mate. Yep. Well, mate, that's all, all we wrote for this review podcast. It's going to be a good, good couple of days, I feel. Yeah, I feel like there's something on. Um, yeah, mate. It's the, uh, we're playing away. Yes. For good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tying the knot very shortly. <laughs> Um, good horse. Yep. <laughs> good horse. Um, good to have you, good to have in your stable. Yep. And uh, looking forward to it. And and like you said, you'll call me in and, and we can discuss it with the drifters next week. Exactly right, mate. And um, yeah, potentially we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming on the review podcast, but that is yet to be seen. Um, movements are still up in the air, so we'll let you know. But Next time you see your boy, he'll be a married man. Yeah. Hectic shit. Yeah. Real yeah. hectic shit. I'll be matching you with like a little bit of bling on the finger. If you like it, then you should have <laughs> you know. No, exciting stuff, mate. But yep. uh, thanks, Drifters. Um, hope you enjoy. I uh, hope you found a few yesterday. And, um, you know, onwards and upwards. All right.